Here we go, tactical technician, diagnation here. Today's video is gonna be called suspension noise in the scope. And uh, we're gonna be using the scope, four channels and four microphones hooked to this car. Now, I'm trying to, uh, I'm gonna start out with just giving you like an illustration of where we are. This is sort of, a, this is an illustration of the front end. The, uh, the four channels are hooked to each of the, ball, the four ball joints. Channel B, I'm sorry, channel A blue is on the lower left or driver's side ball joint. Channel B red is on the upper left or driver's side ball joint. Channel C green is on the lower right ball joint and channel D yellow is on the upper right ball joint. We do have a noise and you'll hear the noise in a second. And I want to go to the car and we're going to start out and look at uh, how, the, uh, how the, the amplitude relates, we see on the scope relates to where the noise is coming from. Now with noise, sometimes there's a there's a causer of the noise and there's and there's receivers of the noise where the noise will travel. As we look at this this schematic here, this illustration, you see in purple right here is the spindle. That's right, the spindle just between the upper upper ball joint and the lower ball joint. Each side has a spindle. Um, and we see upper control arms here in the black between the body and the upper ball joint, both sides. Then we have a lower control arm between the subframe and the lower ball joint, both sides. I will initially start with all four ball joints and then determine on what I see on the scope. I will move microphones around to key in on what's causing the, the actual noise to make a diagnostic decision about what part we're gonna replace. So I'm moving over to the car now. You can see basically the setup. It's not that, that elaborate. It's basically these are four microphones. These are Steelman microphones hooked from the scope right here in the car. You can see it going underneath. And I've latched there, for instance, there is the left outer ball joint. A little hard to see right there, but uh, basically got, I'm, I'm hooked on the stud of each ball joint. On the stud and the nut of each ball joint, there's the right front, basically. Not that easy to see, but unless we're going into the car, we've got more shade now. We've got a lot of sun here today. And I've got the, uh, the scope hooked up. And we're going to start with the noise. And I'm going to turn the steering wheel back and forth. And hope you can hear that. Just kind of, I'm sure you can hear. That's pretty loud. I decided to do it stationary. I was going to go down the road and make a video, but it's yeah. that's dangerous. And in the diagnostic world, sometimes we have to do that. If you're doing that, fellas and ladies, uh, technicians, always use two people and uh, keep your eyes on the road. That is super critical. Super critical when diagnosing those noises with equipment hooked up or any time going down the road. So you can hear the noise. I'll just be quiet. You could hear that. Now we're going to the scope, and I'm going to hook onto this. Give you show you the scope. We're on four channels. We're rolling across, and you can see uh, our four channels. Um, blue is the lower left ball joint. Red is the upper is the upper left ball joint. Green is the um, lower right ball joint, and gold is the upper right ball joint. So we're going to kind of get an idea of where our noise is coming from. I'm gonna start turning that wheel back and forth. The engine is running. Ooh, okay, we see something. We see something there. We definitely see a lot of amplitude on blue and, and, and red, which the noise is coming from the left side of the car. Now, as I look at that noise, I'm gonna shut the engine off and kind of watch something. And you see now, I'll stop the scope, we'll roll it back. And uh, you see right here, we got uh, we got the upper left ball joint here. I'm sorry, the lower left in blue, the upper left in, in red. We are quiet, or there's a little bit as minutia on green and, and, and gold, but nothing like the left side of the car. As we look at this, I would have to determine that that's one, we have one noisemaker on this car. And somebody's causing a noise and the other guy is feeling the noise. That's my deduction because we're so dead nuts in line. The amplitudes are so, so lined up. I'm going to say if both ball joints were making noise, they would be slightly different. They wouldn't make the same exact cadence. The, the, the amplitude wouldn't be so, so lined up uh, just from looking at this. I'm going to, um, that's my, I could be wrong. I'm, I'm going to learn something. I'm going to make my best diagnostic decision here but that seems like it's very well one of these 
areas is causing the noise, and one of them is receiving it. So I'm going to get back to uh, running the scope. I'm going to turn the car back on. And what I'm going to do is now, I'll just do one more ver verification of the noise. So uh, it seems like the amplitudes are about the same size, you know. So I, one thing I can say just from knowing suspension, I'm no suspension genius, but, you know, I cut my teeth with suspensions in my younger years and in school. The lower ball joint carries a lot more load. They call it the load carrying joint, and the upper ball joint is commonly referred to as the follower joint. Let me try to straighten this thing out. Okay. So we're going to, if I'm betting money, I'm going to say lower ball joint. Um, just the fact that it takes, it's a lot bigger and it takes a lot more of the load of the car. And so anyway, what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of, I'm going to use the microphones on the right side of the car and I'm going to come over to the left side. I'm going to leave blue and red hooked up to their original locations. And I'm going to, uh, I'm going to move those other uh, microphones over to, I'm going to, I'm going to start one. I'm going to go to the left outer tie rod which you don't see it, obviously it has a tie rod. You didn't see it on that on the drawing illustration I made, but it does have a left outer tie rod right on the nut. And then the other microphone, I'm gonna be on the uh, on the subframe bolt. Don't don't sell them subframe short, they can make noise. I had one of them just clean my clock, a subframe bushing. Um, that could also make noise. Um, I wouldn't suspect it in this case because our noise is more exacerbated when we turn the car. We know the ball joint pivots. Obviously, and the, you know when when we when we, when we turn in the car. So, um, go ahead in this video. Go ahead, 20 seconds. If I'm gonna I'm just gonna get out of the car. You're just gonna see the the thing go across the screen. But just if unless you want to see stay in real time, and I'm gonna move those microphones, and I'll tell you when I get back. I'll tell you where they're where they are. Okay, I'm back in the car. We're still rolling across. What I did, I moved the gold channel to the outer left outer tie rod, and I moved the green channel to the front left subframe bolt. Here we go. Still hearing it. Wow. seeing something here green is the subframe bolt and yellow or gold is the outer tie rod so it looks like we have an increase in amplitude with the yellow channel which is really odd um, so should I start to suspect the tie rod that's a possibility Let's slow down the scope or stop the scope and say, analyze that our noise is still, there's one noise maker and we have other signals that are actually experiencing noise. Just to look at the way our, our, our frequency is, is right in line with one another. That tie rod's got me thinking, you know, um, of what, what, what is causing the noise. What can I do uh, next? Let me take the green channel and I'll move it toward, I'll get it real close to the lower left ball joint on the spindle, maybe two inches from the lower left ball joint. So give me about, go ahead, 20 seconds in the video.
okay? I'm about two inches up the spindle from the, from the lower left ball joint. I wanna see what happens, how the noise travels. Okay. Okay, we see something now. We still see a lot of amplitude on green, real close to the lower ball joint. Yeah, I'd say it's between the lower ball joint and the outer tie rod, but that upper ball joint's a, definitely a component of interest. As I said, we got uh, blue is on the lower left originally, red is on the upper left, green is two inches up the spindle from the lower, and yellow gold is still on the outer left tie rod. So, I don't know, what would you do here? You can hear that noise. Um, let me kind of get, I'll go to the tie rod. I'll go about four inches inward toward the inner tie rod, still, you know, where, where you would make an, a, a toe adjustment with the green channel. I'll move that microphone around from its position on the spindle and move it over to, uh, you know, kind of halfway between the inner tie rod and the outer tie rod on the left side. Here we go, go ahead, 20 seconds. Okay. My green channel is now it is right on the nut you'd loosen if you were adjusting the toe on this car to, to make a toe adjustment in the front. Okay, I don't see that kind of amplitude. On the green. Wow. So I'm saying, I'm saying to myself that the, the yellow channel is feeling it from the lower ball joint. Being that green, is, its amplitude has somewhat lessened. If it were the tie rod, I would think it would, it would be higher on green right now. So I'm going to make another adjustment. I'm going to uh, move the green channel toward the control arm, the upper control arm, to rule out the upper ball joint. I did a two microphone swap. I am now, okay, I got the green channel on the upper control arm and I got the yellow channel on the lower control arm. So we're still hooked on the original location. We got blue on the lower ball joint, red on the upper low ball joint, green on the, green on the upper control arm and gold on the lower control arm. Here we go. And this is this is typically what happens. The noise decided to go away, and this is the this is the real world. I hear you. You shut the car off. Sometimes you'll get it key off. Typical noise, you know. See, this is this is classic. We know that our our scope is telling the truth because we don't see amplitude now. Let me start it up again. That's typical of a noise. Okay. We see. Yeah. We know we're quiet now. This is characteristic of this car since I've been looking at it with microphones. Here we go. Okay. Now yellow has less, less amplitude now. Green has more. We got to make a diagnostic decision. Okay. Let me look at my microphone.
Now we're quiet, okay. We're, uh, let me shut her off. Give it one more tweak. Okay, come on. What, you, what would you do watching? These are the tough parts about suspension noises. Always looked at that blue and red looked very similar, but we know that the lower ball joint is is a load carrier. Now we see something. We're quiet, but we see something on blue. Yeah, blue seems to lead lead the amplitude. Look at that. Okay, I'm going to call the lower ball joint, and I'll come back to you in a part two, and uh, tell you if that fixed it. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Thanks a lot for watching.